Would you stop talking to me, even if I'm family, just because of some jujitsu? What's up everyone, welcome to the video. In today's episode, we're going to read chapter two of Hicks and Gracie's Brief book. This is basically an autobiography of him and his life in jiu-jitsu. If you haven't watched the first chapter of this video, please click on the card and watch the first video and then come back to this one. In the first chapter, in the last video, we read uh, the first chapter called The Gracie Clan. Today we're going to discuss uh, Growing Up Gracie. It's chapter two of the book, which is basically where he learns jiu-jitsu for the first time. So let's go. So the chapter begins with this picture. I don't know if you can see it really well. It's basically Helio Gracie with uh, Horian and Helson sparring on the beach. These kids were basically practicing jujitsu since they were babies. So in this chapter, Hicks and Gracie begins by explaining when he was growing up, he began to notice how his family was very different from from his society or at least that was what he observed for example the way he was raised and just the way he lived when Hickson as a baby or as a child was brought to school for the first time while all the other kids were crying and kicking and everything he was just calm because that was what he was taught to be without his parents and to just deal with life I guess and while the other students were answering the question of what do you want to be when you grow up, they were answering as, I want to be a fireman, a nurse, a cop, a teacher. His answer was, I want to be a fighter. I want to be a champion. I want to be just like my dad. While the other children brought sweets to school as lunch or whatever, his uh, lunch was apples and whole wheat bread. Because as we talked in the first chapter, the Gracies had these very specific diet to train and to just have your body on optimum conditions so they could fight better. So when Hickson brought these type of bread and apples to school, all the other kids wanted to try it. And according to Hickson, he says that when the other kids wanted Hickson's uh, things, they begged to try his bread and his apples because they brought sweets and other and Hickson used to tell them, according to the book, you can have a little taste, but that's all, because I don't want to eat your shit. You know, that was the kind of mentality these kids in the Gracie family were developing. Another difference that Hickson noticed when he was growing up is that the other children used to be, you know, in, in a normal, healthy, nuclear family, two kids, maybe one brother and one sister, and that's it. In the Gracie family, his uncle and his father had not only multiple wives, but of course multiple kids. Hickson says that his uncle had 21 kids and seven wives. And Helio, his father, did the same thing. I think it was explained in the first chapter that Helio and uh, Carlos uh, Gracie just wanted to have a lot of sons specifically because they wanted to teach Jiu Jitsu. They wanted to have this Gracie clan and they took him, they took it real serious. This being this way, this family was like, Hickson says in the book that, that if Helio Gracie was the general of the family, then all the cousins and the brothers and the whole family were the colonels, the sergeants and, and all these other stuff because they all followed Helio and Carlos Gracie to the latter on what they had to do to become better at Jiu Jitsu. All they, all they did in their lives were with Jiu Jitsu at their minds and hearts. Apparently in the family, they practiced and practiced and fought and compete to always know who was the champion of the family, you know? And Hickson says that, Hickson being the legend that he is today, he explains that the one that always surprised him and impressed him was his brother, Holes. Rolls. Holes was his uncle Carlos' son from Claudia, an 18-year-old woman who worked for the family. So, one of the wives, I guess. He says that Holes' mentality, he, he writes that my brother's 
Open Mind helped him in Jiu Jitsu because he was willing to look outside of it for ideas when other family members were not. Holes trained in and competed in Judo, Wrestling and Sambo, which he used to improve Jiu Jitsu. So this brother specifically Holes, as I have read in the book, seems to be the, the one that not only, as he says, impressed him the most when he was growing up. I think that of all the brothers of Hicks and Gracie, Holes is the one that, that just marked him permanently the most. Hicks and Gracie admired Holes. I think that's the correct pronunciation instead of Rolls. Holes, Holes Gracie. Hicks and admired Holes in a way that I mean he still talks of him today whenever he whenever he explains who is his hero I think he would say his father Helio Gracie and his brother Holes. So Hickson explains and gives the story that when he was 13 years old he uh, fought with a kid in Jiu Jitsu training or something and the kid submitted him because it got him on a tight headlock and instead of calmly defending his neck he says he panicked struggled and even and eventually tapped out and that moment in Hickson's life embarrassed him so much because of all things Hose was looking at him Hose was in that fight so Hickson says that when they got home I'll read this I got home and asked him Hose to roll me up in the carpet for 10 minutes and not to let me out no matter how loud I screamed or begged. It was a summertime and very hot in Rio. So Hickson did this multiple times to get over the fear of just being strangled and in a very, very uncomfortable position so he could fight better. You stop and think of this and it's like, man, this is not just some hobby this is not some after hours thing that this family did no this is very serious and at the center of the gracie family hickson says that this experience taught him an important lesson because and i quote sometimes it is not about escaping but about finding whatever comfort you can in hell you know it's 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 like that saying of being comfortable in uncomfortable positions the thing with Holes is that Holes was this excellent jiu-jitsu master, jiu-jitsu teacher and everything, but he was, let's say, he was walking in a weird path, let's say, because he was associating himself with people that were not all that positive for him. Holes apparently became associated with some friends that had illegal guns and, and even the police went to uh, Helio's house looking for a gun. They respected Helio so they said like, Sir, we're told that there's a gun in this house but we don't want to uh, accuse you of anything or something like that. Helio eventually found the gun because he asked Hickson to look in the Holes room. This can basically tell us the type of man that Holes was. He was very adventurous. Holes was very just open-minded even to a point where it was dangerous. Holes even became involved in politics because it says that Holes believed that the Brazilian dictatorship was wrong and he had friends who were part of the leftist insurgency. During the 1960s, a Marxist group called Asao Libertadora Nacional, National Liberation Action, or ALN, carried out a campaign of bombings and kidnappings in Brazil. So this basically motivated Holes and his friends to become involved in, in this feeling that they were doing the right thing, that they were doing for their nation and whatnot. But when the police, when that situation of that, that the police came to Helio's house and all that embarrassing stuff and I guess situation, Helio says, and I quote to Holes, man, Holes, if you're not careful, Helio warned him, you won't just lose your career, you'll lose your life. Even though his dad had many important political and military connections, the, the Department of Political and Social Order officers were alone to themselves. It was very dangerous, everything that, that Holes was involved in. So Hickson says that his dad said, we have no control over these people, they do whatever they want. They are on the right and 
is on the left. Politics is not for us. Holes ended up apologizing and promised that he will never get into politics again because at the end of it, it would affect not only his not only his whole his his life, uh, Holes, but his whole family, the Gracie family. There was another brother that was very good at. I mean, they were all good at jujitsu, but this other brother. Maybe it was not the superstar that Hose was, but he was a better teacher. I'll read. Nine years older than me, my brother Horian would could not have been more different than Hose. Helio's first son with our birth mother, Belinda. Horian was 10 months younger than Hose. Horian had an easygoing nature, and while he was never the fighter that Hose was, he was a born teacher. He basically taught Hickson better than Hose did. It's just Hose, Hose was a different vibe, and he was a better fighter, but not a better teacher. The problem with Horian in Hickson's mind is that he was a smooth talker in the sense that he bullied Hickson in a way. Hickson says that, the, there was this time when I was around eight, Horian got home from school and I asked him to take me to the beach. Yes, he said, but first, and he, he took off his school belt and handed it to me. This needs to be polished. Next, he took off his shoes and handed, it, handed them to me. And these need to be shined. I polished his brass belt buckle, shined his shoes and gave everything to him. Okay, I'm finished. Let's go to the beach. Not now. Get me some water and an apple. I'm hungry. F Horian? No, get me a f***ing apple. I was pissed, but I was but I got the apple and watched him eat it. Can we go to the beach now? Not now. F Horian, you've been exploiting me like a slave for hours. F I ran to my room and slammed the door behind me. I learned at a young age to drive hard bargains with him. Horian, I guess, was the bully brother. There's this other brother that was an influence in Hickson's life. Is this brother called Helson. Helson could have been the best fighter in the family, according to Hickson, but he was a wild man. He was involved in drugs. He says that he experimented with marijuana, cocaine, and hallucinogens. One day, Helson came to Helio's house, and Hickson says that he was a walking skeleton. I realized that there were consequences to taking drugs. Helson went in this wrong path, and Hickson learned from that, because Hickson was like a mix of all his brothers. Hickson was an adventurer, he was a, a very good fighter, but he was a very good teacher too. And when he, he was involved, in, Hickson was involved in gangs. He, Hickson was involved with drugs too. He did drugs too. But when he saw his brother Helson going through all he, that he was going, that helped restrict him, Hickson. Hickson restricted himself to not go into that path. Another big point in this chapter is that Carlos Gracie and Helio Gracie had so many sons and so th their family was so big that they bought this almost mansion they called it casa grande in Teresopolis in brazil it was a 21 bedroom house today's standards that's a that's not just a mansion that's a pretty big mansion there's something interesting in this Hickson says that all the brothers i mean all the the same aged brothers let's say let's say it like this we're fighting for the Gracie family top spot. Hickson says that Holtz and Horian had totally different attitudes toward life, which were reflected in their jiu-jitsu. And this, this was a very important point for me because this jiu-jitsu discipline, however you choose to live your life will be reflected on how you fight. However you choose to live your life will be reflected on how do you react in your jiu-jitsu. And that is just very interesting to me because, you know, sometimes in life we get used to saying like, oh, this doesn't have anything to do with this or with that. But that's not, it's not always like that. Sometimes whatever you do in this side would affect the other side and vice versa. So that's why in their life, they had to have this mentality to never quit. Whatever they were doing, if they failed, nothing happened. They had to get up and do it again and just get it done. There's this situation where Helio got the kids and, and Hickson involved and Hickson to, to the beach to surf. Hickson says that we learned at a very young age that there was no point in chickening out because it wouldn't get you out of anything. My dad would simply say, 
get back out there and do it again. You also realize that if you follow the Gracie protocols on training, diet, and fighting, they worked. During all this drama in this big house and everyone fighting to be the best Gracie family fighter, you can imagine that there were rivalries of all kind, but specifically, there were rivalries between Carlos' son and Helio's son. But Hose, I don't know if I uh, explained it at the beginning of this video, Hose was Carlos' son, biological son, but Helio was the one that raised Hose. Helio raised Hose, but Hose is Carlos' biological son. So he was the link between the, these two sides of the family. Regarding this point that Jiu Jitsu is at the was and, and I guess that still is at the center of this family's life was that some of the family began to separate as they got older because of their Jiu Jitsu styles, which, it, which for me sometimes it's, it's weird to think about because I mean, would you leave and just not talk to me as much as you used to just because of some jiu-jitsu stuff? Would you stop talking to me, even if I'm family, just because of some jiu-jitsu I read from the book, it says that some of my cousins, says Hex in the book, thought Helio was too harsh and training with him was too tough. So they began to leave, maybe make their own schools and just not train with Helio anymore. They took it so seriously. I'm getting the impression if you were a son of Helio or Carlos Gracie and you didn't like or respected Jiu Jitsu as much as they did, you just weren't a good son. They maybe didn't have a good relationship with you. I mean, that's my impression. I don't know if I'm, I'm not correct. If so, my apologies, I guess. But it says that when Helio realized how good and how passionate I was about Jiu Jitsu, we developed a special relationship. So it can be said that this is the beginning of Helio, of like a father and son relationship. But it was because Hickson's Jiu Jitsu was getting better. You know, it wasn't just because it, it's his son and, and whatnot. No, no, it's, it was still because of Jiu Jitsu. In addition to Jiu Jitsu, Hickson says, my father and I shared a great passion for animals. But don't forget, Jiu Jitsu came first. You know what I mean? As you can observe from what we have been talking till now, they had money, but it wasn't it wasn't rich money in the sense that they used the money for riches and just goodies, let's say. It was money to maintain the jiu-jitsu school, it was money to maintain their diet. So for all purposes, they were maybe not poor, but they were just not interested in luxuries let's say at least that's my impression because in the book there's another situation where there was a situation where hickson was playing with a favela kid uh, like a poor part of brazil and his mother saw him playing with that kid and basically told him like like don't play with him anymore that kid's dirty you don't know what what can happen to us just because you're playing with that kid that reaction came because his mother didn't want that kid to rob the family and to just take take things from them when they weren't looking she was just being careful it was predominant people from that part of the community so his mother tried to associate hickson with let's say upper more upper class kids i read it says many of the upper class kids seem dumb to me because they had no street smarts i didn't want to be a sheltered kid who knew nothing about real life and lived inside of a comfortable bubble sometimes my mom's rich friends would come over to our house with their sons who were around my age and it was difficult for me to relate to them because i grew i grew up with much older brothers they want to talk about the new Walt Disney movie and I want to talk about the latest issue of Playboy or the new Led Zeppelin album. After they left, my mom would ask, did you like little Jose? He was a spoiled little f Why don't you like him? He's not smart, mom. He doesn't know anything about anything. So that was Hicks and Gracie's impression of when he was growing up of these kids. And Hickson was this way because I disagreed strongly with the idea that I should judge people by their appearance or social status. Instead, I decided to follow my heart. Money can't buy 
The most important things in life, friendship, loyalty, courage, honesty, happiness, intelligence, anyone from any class, race, or station in life may or may not have these attributes. If I felt power, love, respect, intelligence, I was going to engage with an open heart and be willing to accept that person as a brother or a sister. If anything, my mom's attitude made the street seem even more attractive. So, they had a this had a very big impact in Hickson's life because what ended up happening was that Hickson's, Hickson began to ask himself, what do I need school for? So long story short, he dropped from school. I think it was, he didn't drop from university. I think he dropped from high school sh like like from intermediate school I don't it, I don't think I don't think he said in which grade he dropped from he was 13 when he decided to drop from school so what ended up happening was that his father Helio Gracie told him like hey you want to live like a man or act like a man by dropping from school well I guess that you need your own shit then his father told him, you're still my son, I will feed you, but don't bother me for anything else. No new bicycle or presents. From now on, you have to make your own money. Looking at it from Helio's perspective, I think I'd do the same thing because if you want to be think and, and, and he, if you want to act like an adult, then I guess that most kids will come around and say, hey, I'm not an adult yet. I was wrong. But apparently Hicks and Gracie, he started working with his brothers. I mean, most of his brothers were adults now. They had their own schools. His father had a jiu-jitsu school, so he could work with that. It was around this spot that Hicks and Gracie began involving himself in a gang and he ended up selling drugs. He was ended up doing all these illegal things which were making him uncomfortable. It weren't till the time where a friend asked him to sell him some pot. Hickson had the drugs under his pillow. Rookie mistake because Helio found it. Hickson and another of, of the older brothers went to confront the dealer and it, Hickson ended up just getting out of the gang, disassociating himself with them and just concentrating more on the actual jujitsu. Hickson began training more under Holsberg Gracie. He began to improve real quickly and Helio wasn't surprised. It was at this moment that Hickson, I guess that some years passed just through this chapter because it was this moment that uh, Hickson began fighting more and more. It was at the end of this chapter. It's explained that Hickson went to this Luta Libre uh, Academy, which I guess it's another martial art, basically submitted everyone in that Luta Libre school. And they asked him like, hey, who the f are you? And someone that was with him was like, hey, don't worry about it. He's Helio Gracie's son, Hickson Gracie. And they were like, oh, no wonder. I mean, they are jujitsu legends after all. The lesson with this was that, and I'll read it because Hickson says it really well. He says that today it is possible to get a jujitsu black belt without knowing self-defense or even getting to a real fight. There was this was impossible during, during the 1970s and 1980s because my father and uncle loudly proclaimed their style the world's most effective form of self-defense. Every young Gracie knew that at some point he will be called upon to, to represent our family in the ring or in the street. Your first official Valetudo fight was like losing your virginity. It was a rite of passage. And I don't know if I said, I said it before, but Valetudo means like everything goes, you know, it was, it's like, you fight until one of the or two quit and that's it you know so that was that was the beginning of this mentality that you fight or until you die or until you i don't know pass out or whatever but you never submit you never quit so that was the ambience that was the surrounding of how a gracie child or a gracie son would grow up in a family where jiu-jitsu was one of the most important things in life. It was, of course, it was very evident from this chapter that there were other important things as like life, respect, being honorable, being respectful from, from your diet, from whatever you eat to whatever, to however you live your life. 
hey Leo and Carlos Gracie were very concerned with how would that affect your Jiu Jitsu which is very very interesting to me guys this was chapter three next chapter will be chapter four the unfed no chapter it was chapter two next chapter will be the predators and prey so see you on the next chapter bye